Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus Saints. We just want to say that we love you so much. And there is nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I tell you what. I'm excited on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Saints. Let's um let's say a word of prayer, Father God, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord God, Lord, for waking us up on today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would continue, Lord God, as you did yesterday, Lord God, to keep showing up, Lord, to keep showing out in our behalf. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would allow us to continue the path called straight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for allowing and helping us to continue. On the path called straight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God. We decree and declare, Lord God, a blessed day, a blessed day. Lord, I decree and declare a blessed day, Lord God, for those your sons, those your daughters, and the bride of Christ. Lord, I just thank you right now for their lives on today. Lord, I thank you for that well-made-up mind that you've given them. Thank you for that fixed heart that you've given them to go on and see what the end is going to be. In the name of Jesus. Lord we just thank you Lord God for that. Persistence. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Lord. Thank you for going before this podcast. I pray Lord God that you would say the things that you desire to say on today. In the name of Jesus Lord. I pray Lord that I decrease as you increase Lord. Lord I present myself your willing vessel Lord God. That I move myself out of the way. So that you may be able to speak to us your people. In the name of Jesus we pray amen and amen do you know tomorrow is already gonna be march the first can you believe that tomorrow all right is already all right gonna be march the first that is amazing to me um it seemed like the time was passing by february came in to me it seems like time slowed a little bit Amen. Now, seems like it's speeding up again. Amen. I tell you what, in every season, we are to give God glory. Amen. In every season, we are to give God glory. Saints, let me encourage you on today. If you have not, listen to me. If you have not um, purpose in your mind... If you have not purpose in your heart to let God be your fortress, you're missing out, saints. Amen. You're missing out. You and I every day have the purpose in our mind and in our heart to allow God to be our fortress. Amen. Now, we are going to walk on water. Hallelujah. But. We're going to look up a couple of words like we usually do. Uh, Also, because it's a Bible study. Amen. It is a Bible study. I believe uh, one of the best things in the day is to start the day with a Bible study. That's just what I believe. Amen. I believe that we have been doing a great thing, which is starting by the written, starting our day by 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 the written word. Amen. I just believe that the Lord is pleased with that. Amen. Anything, any traps, snares that the enemy have set, the Lord always offset. Amen. He always calls it to work for our good. And that's a blessing in itself. Um, James chapter 4 and 3. We're going to go over there. We'll probably start at verse 1. But I just want to say, uh, allow God to be your fortress. Amen. Your fortress. Um because the enemy every day he's walking about like a lion seeking whom he may devour and because he's walking about like a lion me and you you and me we have to be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove amen um it's only in god that we can understand in the whole totality of this of this phrase of this scripture, we can understand, okay, to the root of what this means. To be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Amen. 
And so this is one of the things that the Lord is causing us to do on this day. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Amen. And allow the Lord to be your fortress. Amen. Now, what does the word fortress mean? All right. Fortress. Fortress. Listen to this. Fortress is a military stronghold. All right. Especially a strongly fortified town fit for a large garrison all right so uh similarity similarity similar words is a fort it's a castle all right it's a blockhouse i like that word blockhouse it blocks out everything that's 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 come is that's gonna come against okay the scriptures it blocks it out okay it's a keeper it's a tower all right and then another definition A person or thing not susceptible to outside influence or disturbances. (laughs) Okay, we're going to read that again. Fortress. Fortress. Is a person or thing not, not susceptible. Amen. When we are not in God, but we're just in the church. But we're not in the scriptures. And when we have not made God our fortress, this is me and you, amen, susceptible to outside influence every time. We fail every time. Why? Because the word of God is not our fortress. (laughs) The word of God, it can't be penetrated. When we allow the word of God to be our strong tower, when we allow the word of God to be our fortress, no outside influence can penetrate. Do you believe that? How do you see it? When we allow it, and I don't know if you come to the place in your life and your walk with Christ where you allow the word. Because most of the time, carnal folks, they look at the Bible as a Bible. I'm supposed to have this Bible when I go to church. I read this Bible every now and then. This Bible can lead me every now and then on some stuff that I need to know. Right? Every now and then I pick up the Bible and the Bible speak to me like I'm going through something and then I can read something and I'm like, whoa, I get enlightened. I might get inspired. This Bible is more than just a book. <laughs> it's more than just something to turn the pages and hear the page sound. It's more than uh, an appearance to show everybody, look at me, I'm godly, I'm holy, I'm told my Bible. If we are still in this mindset, we're missing the whole thing because just like the word can transform you just like this word can transform me this same word is transformed into a a habitation that you and I are to dwell in which is called the mind of Christ amen and because this fortress It's dealing with a military stronghold. And it's also not susceptible to outside influence or disturbances. What does that mean? That means the fortress is so fortified, all right, until anything else that's contrary to what's going on with the fortress and inside of this fortress, anything else going on can get in. Does that make sense? Anything else that's going on, no matter what it is, who it is, where it is, how it is, no matter what is going on, it don't it don't matter. And you and I, sometimes when I get on podcasts, I feel a little discouraged, just a little bit, because when I teach, sometimes I feel like it goes over people's head. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like it just go right over people's head. Sometimes I feel like people are not at this place yet to really need God as their fortress. And if you're not at the place to really need God as your fortress, you won't understand not allowing outside influences to penetrate. Amen. What is outside influence? Anything that goes against the word of God. Anything. And when I say anything, it don't matter what it is. It don't. It don't matter what it is. It don't matter who it is. It don't matter. It don't matter uh, where it is. 
And it, ta- it in order to grasp this walk by faith, all areas have to be on the word. Because it takes the walk by faith in order to be able to receive this word transformed into a fortress. It's not just a book anymore. Now it's something I can live in. You know what I'm saying? In living in it, it's something that I I um, purpose in my heart that is sacred since the beginning. It's sacred. It has to do with our Lord and Savior. It has to do with the things that he's done in time past to show us that, hey, I love you. It has to do with loyalty. Do you understand? It has to do with strength. It has to do with not having a respect of person. All of these things collectively together causes us and our minds to be renewed and us to be transformed to be able to see the word as habitation. But, listen to this. If I have respect of persons, guess what just happened to me? Now, this fortress is not really a fortress. Why? Because I can allow outside influences now to dictate how I think, what I say, how I feel. That's not allowing the word of God to be a fortress in my life. Amen. That's not allowing the word of God to be a fortress in your life. Right? So, in order for us to be able to receive the word of God, we have to be in the word of God. And we have, we can't be biased. And I just love Matthew more than Mark. And I love Luke more than John. And then I love Acts more than uh, 1 Corinthians. And then I love Paul more than I love Peter. And then I love this more than I love that. That is a recipe for disaster. You hear me? That is a recipe for it ain't going to happen. It will never happen. Stop wishing for it. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because so many times for so many years, people have tried their hardest to separate the word of God. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't separate God. God is God. God will never change. And no matter how many times we try to slice him up and dice him up and put a servant over here and a servant over there, it don't work. Why? Because when the bridegroom came and the knock came at the door, guess what? It wasn't just his legs that came. Uh-oh. No, it, 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 see, it wasn't just his arms or torso that came. You understand? It was him in his wholeness. It was him in one form. It was him still being the word. It was him, all of him. Amen. And, and when we begin to understand this, we can stop believing that one part of the word worked for us, and the other part of the word don't. How? <laughs> How? Uh, turn from me, I never knew you. What does that mean? That means you didn't have enough relationship with me to understand me in the first place. You thought I was just something to do. You wanted to look a certain way to a certain amount of people. And because of that, I ain't know you. You thought you knew me, but I don't know. I don't know you. Amen. Because when the Lord began to know us, we can then begin to understand. Amen. Lord, I understand. The Lord gave me passage of scripture. We are going to go to James. The fortress. Are you abiding in the fortress? Many times, Psalms 91, we quote it until... We can't, we, I mean, it just, it, we just quote it we can't quote it no more. And all of us say we're dwelling. I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. We're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In Him will I trust. His truth shall be thy shield. And uh, we just go on and on and on and on and on. Without even allowing the Lord to be our fortress. How are we abiding in the secret place? And it's not a, it, this Bible have not been transformed yet into a fortress. How? How can we say that we're abiding in the secret place 
which is the word of God, when we don't allow the word of God to be our fortress, to be our habitation. So if it's not our habitation, how can we abide in something that's just words on a page? We don't allow God to be in the center and the forefront of everything we do. Every decision we make, puh, it's what I want to do, right? Instead of acknowledging God in all our ways and he direct our path, it's about me, myself, and I. How can we allow the word to be transformed in our lives when we don't see it? No, we just see it like it's a book. That's a book for me. to. It makes me look good to tote it. It makes me look good to carry this. It makes me look good to leave this on the dashboard of my car when I go in the store. And people come out of the store, they pass by my car. Oh, look, that person has a Bible in it. And and a lot of times, this is where we live. (laughs) Worried about what somebody think about us. How can this be our fortress? My question to you is, has this word in your walk been transformed from a letter to a house has this word been transformed in your life yet or do you still see it as something that makes you look good because can I tell you something saints it is one of the most saddest it is one of the most hurtful things that you will ever witness when you see somebody holding a gun And you see the enemy coming toward them. And they don't shoot. They're taken out. Like, literally, you had the weapon. But you thought the weapon just made you look good. So you were just toting it just to tote it. You ain't never learned how to shoot it. You just every, and you just polish it up because wait, when I go to the store, I'm gonna have my weapon on my side, and it makes me, it makes people look at me like I'm prestigious because I have this, and, and I look, I look good with this, with this weapon on my side. But we never, ever, ever, ever plan to use it. We never, ever, ever, it, we just used it as jewelry. Some of us. Or just using the word of God as jewelry. Yeah. And we're missing, we're missing the whole, the whole thing. The walk by faith has nothing to do with how we're going to be portrayed. Because when we get in the word for real, it begins to strip us of everything. Can I tell you something else? It began to strip us of everybody. Why? Why, when I get in the Word, do God strip me of everything? Why, when I get in the Word, do God strip me of everybody? Because I don't want you having nobody else attitude, nobody else mindset, nobody else. You're going to be looking like me when I get done with you. Right? So, many times when God is dealing with us, we go through a season of isolation. Many people will speak against the isolation season, but I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you as somebody that has been through isolation season more than once, that when God does it, it's because he's trying to pull folks and pull the world and pull the way we think we're born in seeing shaping and iniquity. I got to pull this off of you. I got to pull that off of you. I got to pull what they said at work. I got to pull that off. And the Lord is constantly working with us. Sometimes he can get us to a place. Now where I can send you back out. But I'm still, he's still working on us every day. But when we go through that season of isolation, you know why it's for? Because the Lord says, when when I send you forth, you ain't going to be looking like nobody else but me. A lot of people don't say it that way. A lot of people don't see it that way, saints. So has, have you come to the place where the, where the word of God is your house and that you really can abide in the secret place? A lot of us, I, I can tell you why a lot of us tell these lies. 
We say we are abiding in the secret place. You can't even stand to be by yourself for 20 minutes. I got to be around this. I got to be, I got to, you can't stand to be, you can't stand to be by yourself. So how, so how do we abide in the secret place? It's a secret place. Most of us, our mouth is too big. It's a secret place. Has the word of God been transformed into a fortress? Because when you're dealing with the military, they're not going to let you run and tell all their stuff. When you're in the military, your mouth is mine. When you're in the military, you're going to do what I say it, when I say it, how I say it, when you're in the military. But when we come over here and we play a little bit, we play a little bit around with this book, and we told it as jewelry, and it make us look good, we don't, we, we don't fool anybody but ourselves, saints. James, chapter 4. We're going to go over to James chapter 4. I said, Lord, what would you desire for me to give your people on today? What do you desire for us to have? And this is what the Lord gave me. Amen. James chapter 4. And we're going to start with verse 1, but we're going to highlight verse 3. All right. So, but it's all important. Okay. It says, from whence come wars... And fightings among you. Now, saints, again, I have to stress this to you. When we get on podcasts, the Lord gives me this stuff hot off the press. Many times he gives me this stuff when, I, when, I, when I'm up and I'm, about, I'm going about. He gives it to me then. One day I asked the Lord, I said, Lord. What would you allow? For, what would you have for me to give your people on tomorrow? And he let me know. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Stop doing that, right? Now I know sometimes we have to prepare for messages, and we're like, Lord, what would you have me to go and preach and go and speak? And many times the Lord will give us a message then. But if you look at it, a lot of times, right when you when you're ministering, the Lord will put something else in there. Why? Because there's a need in the house. There's a need in the house. Amen. And so, with the podcast, this is just the way the Lord has done it. And this is why I always, every now and then, tell us it's a Bible study, right? It's a Bible study. We turn. We look scriptures up. We do all that good stuff. Why? Because it's a Bible study. And because the Lord is feeding us uh, for with manna on high. Amen. And I said that to say this. When I went to the word fortress, um... We're looking at James 4 and and 3, but verse, verse 1 first says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? The fortress, the definition of fortress, begin to tell us about the military. Amen. So it connects. And for years now, the Lord, he's always proved and shown himself mighty when we get on this podcast. The words he gives us connects. And I have to go here. Even the words that seem like she is really in her flesh today, right? She's in her flesh today. Even these words, the Lord comes and backs me up with the things that he has told me to say. Some of these things, I'm like, Lord, you are you serious? You want me to say that? He says, yes. And I say it. And I know it'll make me look silly. But I say it anyway. You know why? Because at the end of the day, who is standing up for you? When it all boils down, who got your back? If if the if the building you live in burned down today, if the house you live in burned down today, the trailer, wherever you are, God forbid, if it burned down today. The fortress that you are to abide in can never burn. And if these, if these things must need be, it causes us not to be able to, it causes us not to go insane, saints. Why? Because our minds is fortified in something else that's not tangible. If you have not gotten to that place in the Lord yet, you will. You just got to keep walking. 
Keep putting one step in front of the other. Amen. And the Lord is going to lead us into this place to know it don't, it don't matter what. It, it, it just doesn't matter what happens in life. If we have our minds fortified in God, this stuff is like water under the bridge. Doesn't matter. And this is how we can say, I'm sanctified and I'm set apart from the world. It doesn't mean we're mean and nasty to people, but it just means their mind is wrapped up in today and tomorrow and all that. Our mind is wrapped up in uh, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. Says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Some of us got lust that's warring in our members. And this brings about wars and fightings. Right? From whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Verse 2 says... Ye lust and have not. Why? Have you ever wondered why? Why do the people that lust, why don't they have? Says ye love, ye lust and have not. Listen to this. Ye kill and desire to have. Now doesn't this sound like a mind that's not all the way thinking straight like you look we, we lust but we have not we kill you kill and desire to have how can you can't try to kill something and still desire to have it is that it's, it just don't make sense it says and cannot obtain this is the word of god it says you lust and have not ye kill and desire to have and still can't obtain it says ye fight and war yet ye have not because ye ask not now we can fight and we can war in the spirit and fight and war in the spirit but we still don't have the bible says because we ask not verse 3 key verse here says ye ask some of us are asking this is what the lord showed me on this morning some of us are asking some of us are some of us are knocking. He said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Alright? Ask, seek, and knock. Some of us are asking, but we have not received. Some of us are seeking, we have not found. Some of us are knocking, but the door haven't been opened. This is what the Lord gave me on today. The the reason why people are asking and and they're not receiving the reason why people are seeking but they're not finding and the reason why people are knocking and the door is not open is because I'm not in that door <laughs> they're seeking the wrong thing they're not seeking me they're seeking something else and I'm not in that either they're asking me for stuff and that I that I'm not in So they're asking me for stuff, ain't got nothing to do with me. They're seeking for stuff, ain't got nothing to do with me. And they're knocking on doors that ain't got nothing to do with me. This is what the Lord gave me this morning. So I want me and you to just think about it. Am I at a door that I've been knocking on for a while and it did and it has not opened? If so, it's probably nine times out of ten because it God is not in that door. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Have I been seeking and I just haven't found it? It's probably because it ain't got nothing to do with God. Nothing. Well, I just wanna I just wanna go, you know, and and and, and do this, but it's for God. It's for God. Is it is it for God? Is it for you? And we ask. And most of the time we ask God. God give me this and God give me that. 
And it ain't got nothing to do with him at all. He says, they're asking for stuff, don't have nothing to do with me. They're seeking for stuff, don't have nothing to do with me. And they're knocking on doors that don't have nothing to do with me. Says ye ask and receive not because this is a it's a cause and effect. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. All right. He says ye ask amiss. Why? Because you lustful. That's why. Amen. And you wanted to consume it upon your own lust. And this is why you don't have what you're asking for. Amen. So what does amiss mean? Um, wrongly. It means wrongly. Um, yeah. It says in a mistaken way or wrongly. So... We ask, he says, when you ask, you ask amiss. What does amiss mean? It means inappropriately, right? It means unsuitable, mistaken, erroneous, all right? When you ask, you ask amiss to consume it upon your own lust. So many, many of us, some of us, we're asking the Lord for things. Ain't got any, it don't have nothing to do with edifying the kingdom. It has nothing to do with exalting him. It, it, the Lord says, acknowledge me in all your ways. And I, God, will, shall direct your path. When you acknowledge me in all. So when we're asking for stuff, it don't have nothing to do with God. Nothing. Nothing. We're asking a miss to consume it upon our own lust. Amen. Says ye ask and receive not because ye ask a miss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Verse 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. All right, enmity with God. Okay, so we looked this up before, but I love to always look enmity up. It's intense hostility. All right, being friends with the world is an enmity to God. That's an intense hostility right it's like trying to play football with the lord but it's not really about the ball but it's about clashing heads it's about the clashing of heads it's about it's the tackle for me right it's the fighting for me it's the warring for me right it's not about the ball it's not about getting the ball where i need to go but it's the tackling and it's the fighting and it's the wrestling and it's the You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, our spirits can be doing this with God. He says, it's an enmity to me. Being friends with the world is like you trying to tackle me. Don't you know, silly fool, that you're going to die? Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Saints, you got to hear me good. You got to hear me good. Whosoever is friends with the world is an enemy to God. Enemy. A person who is actively 
opposed or hostile to someone or something. This is an enemy. A person who... Now, I, I don't believe I've ever... I don't think we've ever looked up enemy before. But this is amazing. Like when, like when you hear this definition... A person who is actively opposed. That means they, they're active in their opposition towards you. A person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Wow. So when you hear that definition. And you think. Do you think that you have enemies out there? A person that's actively. They, they're, they're active in their opposition towards you. It's, they're active in what they do. They're active. Do you have enemy saints? When I read this definition, <laughs> a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something, I, I have a couple of enemies out there. It's so funny because I didn't even know it. That is so weird. Oh, my goodness. That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That is so cute. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, Lord, bless all my cute enemies. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless all my cute enemies, Lord. I pray that you cause their way to prosper, Lord. I pray that you bless the work of their hands, Lord. I pray that you bless their families, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them a new mind, Lord God, a new heart, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for my enemies. Lord, I pray that you will reveal who they are to me so I can love them even more, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All my cute little enemies, Lord, I pray that you would just reveal these folks to me, Lord, so that I may know, so that I may know and that I may bless them even more, Lord. Maybe even purchase a couple of gifts, Lord, and, and, and give it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you right now for all my cute enemies. A person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. It's a foe. It's an adversary. It's an opponent. A rival. A nemesis. Oh, I like that. It's a nemesis. An antagonist. Now, this word antagonist, they're combative. An antagonist. Antagonist. A person who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something. An adversary. This is amazing. Now, let me tell you now. I have not. I have not always been here calling my enemies cute. Never. Okay. I ain't always been here calling my enemies cute. No, baby. (laughs) But I think they're cute now because it's funny to be an enemy of mine because I I just want everybody to do well. (laughs) I just want everybody to live well and prosper. That's what I want for everybody. But when I find myself having an enemy, it's, it tickles me. And they're so cute to me because, I don't know, it's just cute. I don't know. And it's cute, but it's only cute to a certain extent. It stops being cute when I, when I, when I, when I, when I really look deep and, and understand that these folks is headed to hell. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't hate somebody that ain't never did nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. <laughs> that is not that's weird that's not godly that's not that's not godly you know and there are many people portraying god but they are not godly amen they are not godly people and um yeah i'm just my cute enemies i i feel pretty good today and, and that's weird i know it sounds weird why you feel good because you got you you got enemies well when i read the definition of what an enemy is yeah, it fits. It fits a few people. Amen. It fits a few a few people, and I think it's cute. I don't think it's cute that that they may find damnation one day if they don't get it right. But I think it's cute that they want to be an enemy of mine because they they will never win against me ever. Because I've made the word my fortress. You cannot penetrate. You will never penetrate ever. Amen. And this is this is the confidence we have. In the word of God. To know you're living in a fortress, man. Man of God, you're in a fortress. Daughter of Zion, you are in the fortress of God. I mean, who can... Nothing can penetrate. Nothing. Do you believe that on today? Nothing can penetrate that. Amen. So, saints, I want to encourage us not to, when we ask, ask amiss, to consume it upon our own lust. 
Amen. When we ask, don't ask this. Don't don't ask a miss. A lot of times, how how I try to bypass asking God a miss stuff is asking the Lord to let His will be done. That's how I try to buy. That's how I bypass asking the Lord stuff that's a miss. I say, Lord, let Your will be done. Jesus prayed, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He did. He said, Pray after this manner. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus also prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But if it, uh, nevertheless, thy will be done. Now, Jesus prayed his true earnest feelings. Lord, please, Father, let this cup pass. But, although Jesus prayed his true earnest feelings, he said, nevertheless, thy will be done now that scripture is not in the bible for me and you to say oh look even jesus was weak oh look he tried to punk out oh look he ain't never wanted to shed no blood for us no way oh look i don't believe that scripture is in there for you know the little patty cake people i believe that scripture is in there to show us you may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but in, in you, in your emotions may flare up and you may feel a certain way at a certain time. And it's okay to pray to the Lord respectfully and tell him our feelings respectfully. And, but at the end of our feelings should be these words. Nevertheless, how I feel, Lord. Your will be done. That should be our prayer. It should be our prayer. And this is how we stop praying amiss. Because it says, Lord, I'm praying and I'm crying. But it don't matter what I'm saying. Whatever you desire for me to go through, whatever you desire for me to do, your will be done, not mine. And this is how we can stop uh, praying amiss to consume it upon our own little saints. Um, Jesus did it. Jesus the Christ did it. Amen. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Lord, let this cup pass. Let this cup pass. Let this cup pass. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Now, I, you know, looking at Jesus, if it had been you, if it had been me, you better be honest. And I'm going to be honest too. If it had been me, I know. That I would have prayed more than three times. Let this cup pass from me. Jesus only prayed this prayer three times. Some of us would have stopped praying the 15th time. The 20th time. And just start running the opposite way. Yeah. But Jesus being the Christ, Jesus having so much love and compassion, he prayed and stayed. He prayed and stayed. He prayed and he stayed. So, he says, ye adulteresses and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity to God? Um, it's amazing. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy to God. So, if it's an enemy to God, and we say, I am the friend of God, he calls me friend. God's enemies is my enemies. Do you understand that God's enemies is my enemies? Do you understand that God's enemies is supposed to be your enemies too? But when you feel so funky fresh, like, well, them God enemies, them ain't my enemies. I'm still going over here. I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do that. Oh, them God enemies, them ain't my enemies. You, and you think God going to hang out with you? Oh, you just so important that God going to share you. I'm just so important that God going to share me. Oh, God going to share me. The world, that that's his enemy. It ain't mine, honey. So I just let him deal with that. And I, I love the world. I love the, you love the world with the love God gave you. When he said, come out of the world and be separate. And, and, you, and you think that because you so special and you smell so good. That God going to receive you anyway. That's what you think. 
he says that it's an enmity. This ain't no little playing, no little flag football. No, no. We are wrestling, fighting, bumping heads. Somebody gonna die. Enmity. And you think you just gonna lollygag your way? And you think you gonna have the best of both worlds? Lies. Choose. That's what the Lord telling us today. Choose. Because you ain't gonna have it both ways. Choose. It's a tight word. It's a tight word. It's a tight word. Ye adulteress and adulteresses, ye, it says, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. (laughs) You and I have to be we have to look at this word more than just jewelry. More than just this word made me look good because I'm toting it in a Bible case. But when the word really becomes our bread and butter, when the word really becomes our life, saints, every line means something to us. Every line in the scripture is detrimental to our walk. Every line. says, do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. Let us see what the word humble means. Because I don't know about you, saints, but I need more grace. Amen. I need more grace. Humble. Humble having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. Humble. Having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. Humble. There are many people out there, they talk against humbleness. When we read the definition of humble, humble, having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance, there's a lot of people out there that will talk you right slap out of your humbleness. Why you just look at yourself so low like that? What? Well, you're going to have to realize who you is. Why you look at yourself like that? Honey, you this and you that and you this and you. Why you? You gonna have to talk you right out of humbleness. <laughs> it's amazing because the person that's doing this talking, they don't. They, I don't believe it's their motive to talk us out of being humble. I believe they see something great, and they're like, "You should see it too." But it talks against us being humble. Now we have our confidence in the Lord of course. But that's the Lord. That's us looking at the Lord. Knowing that we're weak. But in his strength our weakness is made perfect. That's us giving him the praises and glory. I'm no good. But it's Christ in me the hope of glory. The reason why you like the way I do this. Or like the way I do that. It's Christ in me the hope of glory. Amen. So it's taking us out of the equation causing us to show a modest or low estimate of one's own importance honey you're gonna have to see yourself better than that because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you have yeah well 
the conversation seems innocent. And to me, it is innocent. But you and I now, in the 11th hour, we have to be fortified enough to know. I understand what you're saying, but it's in Christ. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. And without him, honestly, sister, I'm nothing. I I really do appreciate what you're saying, and I definitely understand what you're saying. But I just like to just let the Lord have his shine. I, I do better when I let the Lord have his shine. Yeah. Verse, uh, definition 2 says, of low social, administrative, or political rank. You're at a low social rank. Not always around talking and blah, blah, blah. It's a low administrative or a low political rank. And this is what... Humble. This is what humble means. It says... Lower someone in dignity or importance. That person ain't important. You can treat them any kind of way. Well, that's what you think. Because the ones that are least in the eyes of folks is great in the eyes of God. Right? And the ones that are so great is least in the eyes of God. Why? Because he said if you make yourself a base, that means bring yourself down. Then I will exalt you. How? Because... Uh, he says, I'll draw all men unto me. So it takes Christ in us to draw all men to him. Now, the tricky part is, when he draw these men to him, he's in you. Right? When he draw these men to me, he's in me. Amen? And with that being said, now there's another problem. Now, we got to contend with this flesh because it ain't nothing about you. You ain't fine. You ain't so beautiful. You ain't so uh, 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 muscular and you ain't so uh, uh, a dying piece. Amen? It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's what it is. Because we can take them same muscles. We can take being a dying piece. We can take, oh, he's so fine and he got good health. And we can take, oh, she's so pretty and she got long hair. We can take that right there and we can be messed over by a whole bunch of men and be messed over by a whole bunch of women and get a whole bunch of soul ties. And it'll show us at the end of the day, you ain't nothing. Right? I ain't nothing. But it's Christ in us. Right? The hope of glory. That is where our value is. We are fortified in the word of God. This is what, is what makes the difference. When we put ourselves up against the word. It's so easy to see that we're just little people. <laughs> but it's God that makes us big people. Right? But just us. We're just little minute, little, just a little people just running around like, like a little salt and a little pepper. Just run, 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 run. But it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. This is when we stand up. This is how we can stand against the test of times because we're standing fortified inside of the habitation of the word of God. Has the word been transformed in your life today? I look at a turtle, and a turtle used to be one of my favorite little creatures. And you know why? Because a turtle gets to carry its house on its back. It don't matter if the turtle decides to stop in the middle of the road. He's still at home. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, that's not a good place to stop. But if he decides, if she decides to stop in the middle of the road, she's, they can, they can, they're still at home. If they decide to stop by the River Creek, they're still at home. If they decide to go to the city and catch the bus, they're still at home. Why? Because they carry their home with them. And you and I, we can learn a thing or two from nature. Do you have your home with you? 
Because when we become fortified in the word of God, we become just like that turtle. And we have our home with us no matter where we go. And what the word says, that's what it is. And once we get past what folks think, it's easier to have this as a fortification. Now, if you just look at yourself, if you were one that could minimize your house and really told it on your bed, how many people you think would talk about you? If you were one that could really tote your house on your back, you could minimize your house up to probably how tall you are. Now, it's still a house, but you just kind of minimize it to where you can tote it around. How many people do you think would talk about you? Every, everybody going to talk about you. Why? Because it's not a lot of people that's toting their house around with them. So if, if they'll talk about you, if you tote your natural house around with you, what you think they're going to do when you, when, when you tote your spiritual house around? When you become fortified in this word, what you think they're going to do? <clears throat> hey, come over here and do this and do that and do this and do that. Hey, we finna, we finna, we finna have a party. We finna do, we finna drink, we finna smoke, we finna do that. Well, I don't really do that. Why? You used to. Well, I done got saved and the word says that it's the word. Oh, I'm so tired of him talking about the word. Oh, my God. God wants you to live or he would have gave us a life. He wants you to smoke or he wouldn't have gave us a mouth. He wants you to drink or he wouldn't have gave you a thok. He wants you to look at porn or he wouldn't have gave you no eyes. He wants you to go to this place or he wouldn't have gave you no feet. He would have made you a statue. Oh, my God. Every time you open up your mouth, you talk about God, 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 God. Yeah, they're going to talk about you if you tote your house around. But guess what? When everything else fails, it's the word of God that stands strong. Amen. Do you have your house with you? Hallelujah. Do you have your house with you on today? Huh? Do we acknowledge God in all our ways and continue to allow him to direct our path? Huh? He desires for us to be on the straight and narrow, saints. In the name of Jesus. Saints, look, I love you so much. And until next time, be blessed. In Jesus' name. <laughs>